welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today we are discussing about bradycardia there are various uh, causes for bradycardia like it can be from the heart it can be due to hypothyroidism it can be due to hyperkalemia we'll see all the causes and what will be the treatment for bradycardia in emergency room we'll proceed with causes of bradycardia normal heart rate is in between 60 to 100 beats per minute bradycardia means heart rate less than 60 beats per minute some books mention that bradycardia is defined as heart rate less than 50 beats also now we can see the causes for bradycardia physiological causes like trained athletes will have bradycardia but this, that is a physiological uh, bradycardia during sleep person can have low heart rate other conditions like hypothyroidism cardiac blocks that is second degree and third degree heart blocks raised intracranial pressure obstructive jaundice drugs like beta blockers diltiazem verapamil they are calcium channel blockers and digoxin can also produce bradycardia tachycardia is defined as heart rate more than 100 beats per minute causes like anxiety fear during pregnancy anemia fever thyrotoxicosis atrial fibrillation with fast ventricular rate atropine beta agonist like salbutamol all these things can produce tachycardia relative bradycardia means expected range of heart rate for given temperature is not there whenever we have high degree fever we also can have tachycardia but if that response is not there like a patient who is having enteric fever and all fever will be very high but heart rate will not be so high that's called as relative bradycardia now symptoms of bradycardia can be due to poor perfusion especially to cns brain the patient can have syncopal attack or pre syncopal attacks dizziness light headedness fatigability breathlessness may be due to pulmonary edema chest pain confusion memory problem all these things can be there in patients who is having significant bradycardia the main problem will be reduced perfusion to brain and patient can have associated ischemic heart disease or uh, irregular rhythm like a patient can have palpitation or chest pain all these things can be seen in many patients now you can see what is sinus bradycardia so whenever we see a patient and we examine the pulse if the pulse is coming regularly we always tell pulse is regular and he is in sinus rhythm whereas in ecg to tell the patient is having sinus rhythm you should have a p wave you should have a normal pr interval and you should have a qrs complex after p wave and rr interval should be equal that is sinus rhythm and if the rate is very low then we can call it as sinus bradycardia so normal p wave has to be there pr interval should be normal there should not be prolonged pr interval then we can call it as first degree heart block every p wave should follow by a qrs complex if qrs complex is not there after a p wave it can be a block rr interval should be equal and heart rate is very low here heart rate you can see to calculate heart rate you have to calculate like this 300 by number of large squares coming in between two rr interval two qrs complex how many large squares are coming here six large squares are coming so 300 by 6 here heart rate is 50 so patient can have bradycardia and ecg should be in sinus rhythm then we can tell the patient is having sinus bradycardia there are some reversible causes for symptomatic bradycardia they are 
hypovolemia, hypoxemia, hydrogen ion that is acidosis, hypokalemia or hyperkalemia. In that hyperkalemia is more important than hypokalemia. Hyperkalemia produces significant bradycardia. Hypoglycemia, hypothermia. And other side, toxins, taminate that is cardiac taminate will have significant bradycardia. Tension pneumothorax, coronary or pulmonary thrombosis, especially inferior wall MI can produce severe bradycardia. Hypovolemia, increased ICP, that is trauma. In that one of the common toxicological substance which can produce bradycardia is OP poisoning. Another important condition where patient can have sick sinus syndrome. Here the sinus node is actually sick due to some reason or degenerative disease or ischemic heart disease. Sinus node is sick. Many patients can have tachybrady syndrome. Sometimes patient can have tachycardia, sometimes patient can have bradycardia, sometimes patient can have prolonged pause. Whatever it is, during uh, this uh, alternating sinus tachycardia or bradycardia, patient can have sometimes prolonged bradycardia. So, one of the cause for bradycardia is sick sinus syndrome. So, during sick sinus syndrome, patient can have sinus bradycardia that may be severe. Sinus arrest or sinus pause, sometimes you don't see any QRS complex at all for, at all for some time. Sometimes patient can have SVT or paroxysmal AF and suddenly patient can even develop complete heart block, second degree heart block, that is AV blocks. So all types of arrhythmias can occur in a patient who is having sick sinus syndrome. Here the sinus node is sick due to various reasons. Now another important condition is second degree heart block. We have already told prolonged PR interval is first degree heart block. Suddenly, if you are missing one QRS complex, that is second degree heart block. Here it is Mobitz type 1. You can see here uh, that is uh, sudden progressive prolongation of PR interval. First PR interval is short, second one is long, third one is longer. Fourth one, after P wave, there is no QRS complex. There is drop of one QRS complex. This is called as Mobitz type 1. Most of the time, this may not create any problem like bradycardia in patients. But you can see here, that is second degree type 2 block or it's called as Mobitz type 2. Here what happens is, there is no progressive prolongation of PR interval. But suddenly, patient on ECG, you can see after one P wave, there is no QRS complex. You can see First P is not visible in the first ECG. Second P, after P wave, there is QRS complex. After T wave, there is there is a P wave. Following that, there is no QRS complex. So, there is a drop of QRS complex there. So, you are calling this as second degree heart block, type 2 second degree heart block. But after every normal P wave, you are getting drop in QRS complex. And second ECG, this has become severe type 2 uh, second degree heart block. So, you can see first QRS complex, second QRS complex. After that, there are only P waves. After P waves, there are no QRS complex at all. This is called as high degree second degree heart block, high grade second degree AV block. So, that will be, in that patient will have severe bradycardia. If you see the pulse, you will get very low heart rate. Now, third degree heart block is on the, it's it's a, uh, it's a complete AV block. You can see P waves are coming regularly. QRS complex are coming regularly, but there is no association between P and QRS complex. Here, SA node is not conducting the current to ventricle. SN, from SA node, it may go to AV node, but from AV node, it is not going to go to the ventricle. But if current is not coming from SA node, AV node also fail. Suppose AV node also fail. If 
then next uh, part that is Vendrick will take over the function or AV node itself will take over the function and slowly the heart rate you can see the QRS complex coming in between uh, P waves but there is no association between P and QRS complex. P waves comes regularly that means atrial activity going on regularly then you can see QRS complex they are also coming regularly but in a slow pace but there is no association between P and QRS complex. This is called as third degree heart block. You can see severe bradycardia there. Heart rate is very, very low there. So that is another cause for bradycardia. So we have seen some causes for bradycardia. So you remember the uh, uh, first one, uh, 5H and 5Ts, then complete heart block, second degree, high, de high degree, second uh, degree, high grade AV block that is type 2, 6 sinus syndrome, all these things you can get bradycardia. So initial management of uh, severe bradycardia is always uh, in emergency room, you have to take care airway, breathing, circulation, keep the patient in a uh, bed, put the patient in propped up position because many patients can have pulmonary edema, put a large bar IV access, IV line, then many patients may require oxygen and take a proper 12 lead ECG see what is the rhythm in the ECG atropin is the first line treatment for any type of bradycardia conditions like complete heart block or second degree heart block it may not work but even then atropin is the first line drug IV atropin should be given 1 milligram is the loading dose or first dose then it may be repeated three times we can give but after that it will not become it will not be effective because uh, there are some re some other reasons for the bradycardia you will have to correct that if the patient is not improving with atropine and if the patient is having blocks first like uh, second degree or third degree heart block patient may require pacing whether it is temporary pacing or permanent pacing, they require cardiac pacing, transcutaneous cardiac pacing. Now, when we are using atropine, we should know something about atropine. Atropine should not be used or used with caution in a patient who is having acute coronary ischemia or myocardial infarction. Like patient who is having inferior wall MI, many patients can have bradycardia. So sometimes if you use atropin very early, patient can go to tachycardia that can aggravate the problem. So you should be very careful when we are using atropin. Atropin may be used with caution and appropriate monitoring following cardiac transplantation. It will likely to be ineffective because of the transplanted heart lacks vagal innervation. So atropin may not be effective in a transplanted heart. Second degree, third degree heart block, atropin will not work. So, they may require pacing. But even then, as a first line therapy in emergency room, always atropin should be given in bradycardia or symptomatic bradycardia. Alternative drugs, many are there. We can start adrenaline uh, like 2 to 10 microgram per minute and titrate according to patient response. That is an infusion. Dopamine can be started 2 to 10 microgram per kg per minute. Higher doses can increase the heart rate. Lower doses will not increase the heart rate. If the patient is having beta blocker or calcium channel blocker overdose, glucagon also can be used. The dose is 3 mg initially followed by infusion at 3 mg per hour if needed. So, in beta blocker induced uh, or toxicity beta blocker toxicity induced bradycardia glucagon is is the treatment of choice atropin can be given initially but patient may not respond to atropin now if the patient is having heart block all these patients initially we can try with atropin isoprenaline or adrenaline but patient may not respond to uh, all these drugs 
in heart blocks these patients may require temporary pacemaker uh, in emergency room but some of the patients may require permanent pacemaker so there are some specialized situation special situations where specialized treatment is required like patient is having hyperkalemia you can get very tall t waves t waves and patient can have bradycardia this occurs mainly in patients who is having chronic chronic or acute renal failure when the kidneys are not working potassium will not be excreted from the body so it will accumulate in the body and hyperkalemia occurs patient can have severe bradycardia so if the patient come with severe bradycardia with a history of renal failure remember that the cause is hyperkalemia this patients may not respond to atropin at all transiently the heart rate may improve with atropin but again the patient develops bradycardia and complications so this patients may require calcium gluconate 10% calcium gluconate 10 ml over 10 minutes this is mainly given for membrane stabilization to prevent arrhythmias then insulin dextrose infusion can be given 25 or 50% 100 ml dextrose with 10 units of insulin if the patient is diabetic avoid dextrose if the patient is having hypoglycemic avoid insulin salbutamol nebulization can be given 10 to 20 mg in 4 ml of saline should be given as nebulization this is a very high dose patient can have tremors palpitation and all so it can be avoided if other uh, measures work in patient then sodium bicarbonate should be given only in hyperkalemia induced cardiac arrest otherwise it may create some problem uh, unnecessarily so you can avoid this in emergency room unless until the patient is having arrest or impending arrest then lasix can be given that is furosemide if the kidneys are working it will remove potassium through the kidneys if the patient, if, if the patient is having renal failure and if there is no urine output better patient can be taken for dialysis if patient does not respond to the previous drugs sodium polystyrene sulfonate is a potassium binder that can be given to avoid potassium absorption from the stomach or patient can advise can be advised for low potassium diet now op poisoning is another important condition where atropin is used and patient can have bradycardia remember we are giving atropin in op poisoning not to improve the heart rate we are giving atropin to reduce the secretions in the lungs so the end point of atropin treatment in op poisoning is drying up of secretions in the lungs not tachycardia many think that when we give atropin atropinization means heart rate increases that is not atropinization in op poisoning atropinization in op poisoning is drying up of secretion in the lung but however op poisoning patient can have severe bradycardia increased secretions atropin is the drug of choice initially to uh, to correct all these things where the atropin should be in that condition atropin should be given as continuous doses or continuous infusion because one or two doses will not improve the problem in op poisoning they have heavy secretions to control that you can give atropin as infusion if the patient develops over atropinization or altered behavior to reduce that we can add glycoperlate or switch to glycoperlate that will have similar action of atropin but it did not cross the blood brain barrier now you can see the chart here whatever we have discussed is there in the chart whenever patient is having severe bradycardia look for the causes especially 5h 5h and 5t's they are very important if uh, if something is there like acidosis is there we have to correct that hyperkalemia is that we have to correct that hypovolemia is there we have to correct that without correcting that if you give atropin patient may not improve at all so correct the uh, causes which can produce bradycardia that should be done in emergency room take care of the patient's airway breathing circulation because many patients can have breathing problem or altered behavior all should be taken care then atropin is the treatment of choice in emergency room 1 mg can be given 
and you can repeat up to 3 mg but atropine action will not last long it is a short uh, acting drug so you can give atropine but sometimes it may revert to normal rhythm otherwise you'll have to start continuous uh, infusions of adrenaline dopamine something like that if the patient is having heart blocks like second degree or third degree heart block they may require pacing now we have discussed about various causes for bradycardia ecg changes and its management thank you